to remember Ijaz Chowdhury and demand justice. How many more killings are going to happen before we hold the police accountable? The 62-year-old man was shot and killed by police after his family requested a wellness check. Plus... And the first thing on our mind is just to come and this is our spot. Patios, salons and malls open their doors to eager customers as we officially enter stage two. Plus... COVID-19 hits the Toronto Blue Jays. Several players and staff have tested positive for the virus about a month out from the return of play. Good evening, I'm Mike Wise. The Mississauga Park was the site of a public funeral for Ijaz Chowdhury tonight. It was held outside to accommodate the hundreds who came to pay their respects. Chowdhury is the 62-year-old man shot and killed by police over the weekend after a call for help. Taylor Simmons was there. Hundreds performed the Janazah prayer and Islamic funeral ritual as Ijaz Chowdhury's casket lies front and centre. Family, friends and the Malton community joined in a local park to say goodbye, but also to call for action. He was a harmless 62-year-old man who was a father of four. His youngest, seven-year-old Moise, who stands with us today. How many more killings are going to happen before we hold the police accountable? How many? How many families are they going to leave without fathers? And it's, 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 it's murder, it's murder. Chowdhury died on Saturday after his family says they called paramedics on a non-emergency line concerned for his well-being. He suffered from schizophrenia and other medical conditions, but when Peel police later arrived on the scene, they ended up firing into Chowdhury's apartment. The circumstances around his death are still under investigation. The incident spurred a number of protests this week, calling for justice and an overhaul to how mental health calls are handled. There's a need for a public inquiry to, to really get to the bottom of this. What we have as a system right now doesn't work, and it needs a pretty thorough change. And if this is the time we make a statement. Enough is enough. Others say the officer who took the shots should be fired. When are they going to stand up and take accountability? That's the main question. Peel Regional Police have asked for patience as they and the province's watchdog continue their investigations. For now, Chaudhry's family says they're finding some comfort in their neighbours. Majority of the people here actually knew who he was. And it's, it's great, we're grateful that we see that he made such an impact in this community. Chaudhry will be laid to rest so tomorrow. Taylor Simmons, CBC News, Mississauga. And you stand with us. I'm back here in Toronto, despite the cooler weather, many downtown patios were quite busy this evening. Toronto and Peel Region both officially entering stage two of pandemic reopening plans today. Our Chris Glover takes us through day one, which for some started about 23 hours ago. As the clock struck 12.01, we'll drinks flowed on Toronto patios as if it were a holiday. Honestly, tonight it felt like we were waiting for New Year's. I've never been on time for a party or an event, and I'm excited and happy to be here. And the first thing on our mind is just to come, and this is our spot. Kareem Gatia had originally planned to stay away from his spot on College Street for another month. And funny, we switched our mind from a month to immediately, we said, no, that's it, we had it, we need to try to go back to our normal life. Feels kind of normal, you know? Usually there's not a TV broadcaster here, but other than that, it feels real normal. But dining in Toronto still isn't quite normal. Nothing inside and a mandatory two meters between tables. The restrictions uh, are needed because of the virus, but uh, you know, we're right now set up on our patio for just about half and it'd be about 30% of our total capacity. Toronto's mayor laughed with patrons at one of Toronto's most famous rooftop patios also allowed to open. At Hemingway's plexiglass dividers are up and no standing zones are marked. Malls from the Eaton Centre downtown to Etobicoke's Sherway Gardens are also open. It's going to be amazing seeing all people, you know, coming back to mall 
and life is going to be all exciting once again. You'll see health safety measures like directional arrows, but you won't see the technology working behind the scenes. So essentially what the system will do is send an alert to all of our managers on duty uh, to look at that particular zone to see if possibly we have too many people in the area. Masks aren't mandatory here or at many restaurants either, and most people were spotted without them. It's still unsettling, but I guess it'll get back to normal. Just putting our toes into the water first time. New cases of the virus continue to trend downwards, but experts warn these newly returned freedoms could be quickly taken away. The disease still lurks among us, and the, the thing is that if we're not careful, we can start to see an, a spike in cases, and then the worst thing in the world would be have to uh, move back in our restrictions again. That'd be tough to swallow, especially as so many are giddy at today's possibilities. All you need to have a haircut, that's what we're waiting for, me and my son. And of course, despite these places being open for business, there are a lot of businesses that will remain closed. Those include movie theaters as well as indoor gyms and also outdoor structures, including playground structures and exercise equipment. Those are not a part of phase two. And finally, any kind of large or even medium sized events, including festivals and concerts. They are not open today either. Chris Glover, CBC News, Toronto. Peel Region also moved into stage two today. Now in Brampton, that means some summer camps will soon be allowed to start up. Pleased to announce that the city of Brampton will be offering modified summer camps starting July 13th for ages four to 10. Heading into stage two is removing restrictions. It is not returning to our old ways. Brampton will also open its outdoor basketball courts for training on Friday. Splash pads will open Saturday. And garage sales are now allowed with a maximum of 10 people. Officials are stressing, though, that residents need to continue practicing physical distancing, proper hand hygiene, mask use, and staying home if sick. Good news if you've been longing to get over to the Toronto Islands. Ferry service resumes on Saturday. We all know that people love uh, the Toronto Islands. These are a beloved part of our city that people like to enjoy, especially in the summer months. And the ferry ride is very much a part of that. It's a time-honored tradition for Torontonians. Well, each year, more than one million people visit the islands. Now, to avoid overcrowding, ferry capacity will be cut in half, and there'll be a new schedule for the crossings. Also, you'll need to purchase a ticket online from the city's website. It is capping the number of tickets sold each day to 5,000, so you'll be asked to wear face coverings while on that boat as well. well Windsor-Essex will be allowed to move into stage two of the province's reopening plan tomorrow. The only exceptions will be the communities of Leamington and Kingsville, which have seen COVID-19 outbreaks am among farm workers. Today, Premier Ford released a three-point plan to address the situation on the farms. It includes on-site testing and allowing asymptomatic workers to stay on the job with safety provisions in place. While some farmers say they're happy they can continue to work, advocates for migrant workers say this is dangerous and they want to see it reversed immediately. It's horrifying what's happening when the Ontario government chooses to respond to death by putting more people in the line of fire. This has not been allowed for anyone else in the country. Why? Because it's not right. Almost 500 workers have tested positive for COVID-19 across 27 farms in Leamington and Kingsville. An estimated 80 to 90 percent of them are migrant workers. Toronto police are asking for help in trying to identify a woman found dead near Trinity Bellwoods Park two weeks ago. The female's lifestyle circumstances are unknown at this time. She may have been recently transient from another city. Or another possible scenario could be that she was confused, disoriented, thus leaving her home going unnoticed. We're asking that anyone that may have had interaction with her and may have had a conversation where she may have given a name, possibly a first name or a nickname, I ask that you call police. The woman was found dead on a sleeping bag in the grass at the corner of Dundas and Crawford in the early hours of June 10th. Trinity Bellwoods Park was busy the day before, and police are hoping that someone recognizes the woman from this artist's rendering. They've also released pictures of her clothing and her sleeping bag. She doesn't match any missing persons profiles in the city. Investigators add her death is not considered suspicious. 
Well, friends and family gathered tonight for a drive-up vigil to remember Carolina Shisulo and her three young daughters. All four were killed when their SUV was struck by another vehicle last Thursday. But almost a week after that crash, we still don't know the name of the suspect or whether charges will be laid. Talia Ricci has more. Family and the community are still reeling from the loss of grade four teacher Carolina Chisulo and her daughters Clara, Liliana, and Mila. She was my rock. I lean on her for everything. She was my younger sister and I was always so proud of her. Peel police say this case is complex and involves an investigation with the SIU, adding that they understand the need for the public and the family to get this information. We have to look at the, the perspective of the investigation and, and, and the police perspective is that, you know, they can't always just come out and say everything that they know because it could hurt the investigation. It could hurt court processes down the road. But this Facebook video that surfaced of what many believe to be the suspect was widely seen and shared, including by Brampton's mayor, Patrick Brown, who last week said the man was driving with a suspended license, didn't have insurance, and has previously been charged with multiple offenses. CBC has not independently verified this. The result was many naming who they believe to be the suspect on social media and wondering why his name wasn't being made public. Lamming said when the SIU is involved, investigations take longer, especially if toxicology reports are involved. In terms of reputation, trust and police, it's kind of it's very low right now. And the fact that transparency isn't isn't coming out of this as soon as people would have wanted to, it's going to it's not going to help the reputation. The family friend who started a GoFundMe page says right now, loved ones and the father left behind are trying to focus on healing. In due time, his name will come out. Uh, you know, let that be secondary. Let the anger not consume any of us right now. And that support continues to pour in. The GoFundMe page raising more than $375,000. Peel Police said today that once the suspect is charged, the family will be notified and then that information will be shared with the public. The 20-year-old driver is still listed in serious condition and the SIU investigation is ongoing. Talia Ricci, CBC News, Brampton. After the break, stage two means fresh cuts. Our Greg Ross is one of the first to get back in the chair today. We'll tell you what kind of safety protocols you can expect. We'll show you Greg's new do coming up. Plus. Well, we waited for it, and here we are, a day where the temperatures are below seasonal, windy conditions. I'm meteorologist Colette Kennedy. It was a one-day-only event. We're going to see things going back to seasonal, and then we're warming up. I've got all the details that's coming up after the break.
And it looks like COVID-19 is hitting the Toronto Blue Jays. A source is confirming to the Canadian press tonight that several players and staff members have tested positive. Now, the team has not confirmed it. Training camp is supposed to start next week. The Jays shut down their spring training complex in Dunedin after a player first presented coronavirus symptoms last week. Joe McGinley is among the inductees to this year's Hockey Hall of Fame. The former Calgary Flames captain was named in his first year of eligibility. He becomes the fourth black athlete to be named to the Hall of Fame. Now joining him in this year's class, Canadian women's star goaltender Kim St. Pierre and former NHLers Marion Hossa, Kevin Lowe and Doug Wilson. And registration is now open for the City of Toronto's new summer day camp program, Camp T.O., more than 32,000 registered camp spaces are being offered for kids between 6 and 12. The families in Etobicoke, York and Scarborough got to sign up today on the city's website. Registration starts early tomorrow for Toronto, East York and North York. Camps will start on July 13th. It's been months since anyone has been able to get their hair cut by a professional. And now that our city has stepped into phase two, Barber shops and salons are getting flooded with requests. I got my appointment for next Monday. Our Greg Ross was one of the first to head to his local stylist as he found out a lot has changed. I know a lot of us are in the same boat. It has been five months since I've had a real haircut. And I'm not talking about one of those DIY at home haircuts that a lot of us have done. Oh, I just about cut my ear off there. And now that we've moved into phase two, I can actually get this mess on top of my head cut. But a lot has changed since the last time I've had a haircut. For instance, masks. We didn't have to wear masks the last time I got my haircut. We have to wear them now. <laughs> Let's try that again. All right, here we go. So this is Ernesto de Monaco from Salon Solis, and you're going to cut my hair today. And I see you are also wearing a mask and a face shield. Yes, mandatory now with public health and this pandemic is still going on. It's uh, part of the requirements. All right, well, let's do this. When they made the announcement last week that we were going to be moving into phase two, have you had a lot of people calling saying they need to get in to get a haircut? Today being the first day where the phones are going crazy. We're, we're just booking all our appointments and trying to get as many people as we can. I was pretty short yes, before. Right. Maybe. Maybe we could try something a little different this time. Okay, so just style it up. Okay, the Mohawk's making a comeback. Yeah, I can't pull that off. How about the old greasers look, 1950s? James Dean, eat your James heart. James Dean. Out. Okay, I call this the comb over. Kind of a George McFly kind of thing going on over here. <laughs> Why don't you just kind of go with what I normally have had over here? Sure, of course, yes. The reporter haircut. Yes, of course. Okay. So how long have you been cutting hair for? Well, I've been cutting hair, only hair, for over 31 years now. Has that been a problem for you? I mean, not, you know, not having a lot of income over the last three months to keep this place afloat well, and pay the rent? you know, we have to think uh, we've had a good landlord who's been very understanding with the current circ circumstances. And we've been here so long, I don't think he wants to lose us. So he's very flexible. He knows we're a viable business. Do you think a lot of uh, a lot of people who do what you do are, are going to be struggling to get back into business because of the layoff? Uh, yes, I think I think a lot of uh, salons have already closed. Um, there's been a huge shift in our industry. A lot of it has gone also underground now. Okay. So are you ready for the big reveal? I'm ready. What did I do? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Ta-da! Back to normal. That actually looks so much neater. That is so, that is going to be so much easier to manage. It's like the good old days that back in March. But here we go. I'm a new man. Nice haircut, Greg. Well, time to check on the weather forecast now with meteorologist Colette Kennedy. So, Colette, it's been a while since I've had to ask, but is it ever going to warm up? 
Yeah, it's funny kind of how short our memories are for some of these things, right? But here we are with a much cooler day on our hands. Kind of had to change the wardrobe up a little bit, didn't we? We had those winds coming in from the west. Those were a little bit cooler too. The temperature's obviously cooler and the dew points down. So more comfortable in terms of, hey, what you got on the thermometer, that's what it is. No Humidex to worry about. So Windsor 23, yesterday it was 27, so down four degrees. Toronto 23 today. Yesterday was 26, so down three. And Ottawa, this was a big one. Yesterday, almost 31, so nearly a 10 degree drop in terms of our daytime highs. So here's the situation, too, and what we're seeing. We've been seeing this kind of clearing trend after some of those isolated showers from earlier. So the clearer skies tonight. And then the setup tomorrow means we'll have quite a bit of sunshine earlier in the day. Then some clouds will be building in into the afternoon. And yes, there is a chance along the north shore of Lake Ontario into the afternoon, into the GTA, that we could see a few showers popping up. Now a greater risk of that showing up around London back into southwestern Ontario so along the northern shore of Lake Erie and around the Niagara region and this is in the later afternoon into the early evening some embedded thunderstorms in here yes that's possible too. Elsewhere into cottage country some drier conditions there. Then we clear out Thursday night into Friday that sets us up as high pressure builds in for some beautiful sunshine and warming even further. So tomorrow we do warm up a little bit, kind of back towards seasonal, and then Friday we're flirting with 30 degrees for our high. So how soon is the warm up? It starts tomorrow and then we have some warmer conditions into the weekend as well. And we're kind of doing a thing where almost every other day there's a chance of getting into some showers. So your temperatures overnight tonight in southwestern Ontario with the clearing, you're going down to 14 to 15 degrees for those overnight lows into tomorrow yes we're looking at some breezy conditions still with those winds from the west and some scattered showers and thunderstorms now toronto overnight tonight the low about 13 degrees again clearing so starting with sun and then some changes into the afternoon and mid-20s for our highs now there's that warm up into friday here we go again sunshine almost 30 degrees Saturday, as you're planning your outdoor plans for the weekend, it is looking like we could have some wet weather into Saturday. Now, more than likely, that's going to be in the morning hours, so the early part of the day Saturday. So it's not going to be the whole day that's going to be a write-off. Into Sunday, things look very good, 28. And Monday, we may not quite make it there to 30 degrees, Mike, but I'm going to go ahead and go for it. All right. Thanks a lot, Colette. The weather is brought to you by Train, the most reliable heating and cooling brand. We test, so it runs. It's hard to stop a train. Coming up, we've got the physically distanced and very unique graduation ceremony for students at Humewood Community School. It featured drones and cars, even drag queens. We'll show you more after the break.
The pandemic is forcing graduates across the country to celebrate a little differently this year. And grade 8 grads from Humewood Community School in York certainly did it in style, all thanks to their parents. Students gathered at a safe distance as a drone was used to get these great class photos. Then there was a car parade that took place through the neighborhood, even some drag queens stopping by for the party. Here's what some of the graduates had to say about the whole experience. It was so cool because like none of it was expected. Like it was all a surprise for us and now we get to like have this video forever. It's like remember it. I think that it's like sort of nothing that we could have imagined or pictured as much as like we thought what our grad would be like, not in a bad way, it was amazing, but it was just completely different than what you think of when you're like, when you when somebody says the word grad. I'll take away the friendships and how I got to see everybody, but also the fact that it just, it was just special. Congratulations, some great memories there. Well, as we head into what would have been the summer holidays, many parents are no doubt wondering what's happening with the schools. Well, Education Minister Stephen Lecce will be on Metro Morning tomorrow to talk about the options he's looking at for September and what the province has learned from these past few months of remote learning. You can hear that just after the 8 o'clock news on CBC Radio 1. I'll see you back here tomorrow night at 11. Good night.